Welcome to Baja. the last two weeks driving this new to us region of Mexico and today we're sharing all that we love about this incredibly beautiful place so far. But first we need to catch you up to speed. Last time we left off we were crossing the border from California into Mexico to begin our open-ended journey of driving from the USA to Ushuaia at the very tip of Argentina. This is our first international border crossing in our truck camper, and it was certainly a learning curve that was met with equal parts nerves and excitement for the fun and adventures that awaited us on the other side of the border. Oh, and you can't forget about the tacos. It took us less than a mile over the border into Mexico before we found a taco stand, and we stopped for the first of, I'm sure, many delicious tacos during our months in Mexico. We ended our first day in Mexico on a beach in San Felipe, which is where we're picking back up today. So in case you're not familiar with Mexico's Baja Peninsula, it's a skinny piece of land that juts away from the mainland of Mexico, just south of the USA's state of California. On the eastern side of the peninsula, you have the Sea of Cortez, and on the western side, you have the Pacific Ocean. The peninsula is divided up into two different states, Baja California in the north and Baja California Sur to the south. These two states are connected by mountains that run from the north of the peninsula all the way to the southern tip that makes up what feels to be the spine of the Baja Peninsula. Now, while Baja is most famous for its incredible beaches, between these two bodies of water is a mountainous desert landscape that is vast and mostly barren. warm finally. I think it's finally 75 degrees outside where we are making smoothies while we are pulled over for a few months amongst these giant cactuses. Cacti? Cactuses? So we got bananas, mangoes. We just stopped by the grocery store. I got some fresh fruit. I'm trying to use up some of the stuff we have. That's the best part about being somewhere warm is we just picked up fresh oranges and fresh strawberries. But I gotta use up what we have first. We're gonna use up the mangoes and the bananas and the spinach. So we're continuing our journey down south, but along the road there are just these gigantic cacti. I mean, these things are freaking huge. Look at this thing. I mean, we're, we need to stand beside it for scale. I'm gonna make Sarah stand beside it. How tall are you? Five, five -ish. I think that thing is 25 or 30 feet tall. If you look at our truck next to it, our truck is 10 feet tall. That's well over 20 feet. I think it's closer to 30. While the interior of Baja feels mostly rugged and desolate, periodically you can see patches of green way off in the distance that look a bit like a mirage. These oases in the desert offer refreshment and a change in scenery amongst a never-ending landscape of dust and cacti. Rolling into these little towns with lush green grass and palm trees feels refreshing and cool after being in the shadeless, unrelenting desert for so long. During our 700 mile drive from San Felipe to La Paz, we made a couple of overnight stops in small towns. And that's where we stumbled into one of our favorite stops. So we finally 
have stopped for the night and we were passing on this, actually this overpass right here. What white is couple. this? This is cute. Here. We saw that there was a van and we're like, oh, I wonder if people are camping down there. And then we saw this little sign that said RV park camp. I'm like, hey, let's just check it out. We drove under the overpass and went down this dirt road and, and it was kind of overgrown. It was really cool. And then all of a sudden we end up in somebody's backyard and I start walking around. And I'm like, am I allowed to be here? And it's just their home. It's sort of like a think of it like harvest host or something like that back in the States. But she opened up her backyard. It's this little elderly lady. And for 200 pesos, we can camp here right along the river. And even on the river, they have this boat that you can take a tour on. We're starting to get into the what we wanted to experience to end up in to end up in these weird situations. Yeah, we're gonna go off grid. Yeah, we're gonna see amazing, beautiful places, but it's these situations where you get to interact with people and, and see life at a different pace. Um, that's what's really beautiful and meaningful to us. So we're gonna make some dinner, call it a night, and then tomorrow we'll continue on south. We're only staying here at night, but it's a really, really nice small town here in Baja. All right, see you in the morning. Like most people, we're drawn to Baja for its beaches, and with that, it's likely to come with good seafood. You know, I don't know what it is, but swimming at the beach in Mexico, you just get this natural hunger for fish tacos. And tacos are largely a breakfast food in Mexico, so a lot of taco shops quite close around lunchtime. But we did find one and they're only open for a few more minutes and it's really close to town. But this is a little family run place. It's like a whole family behind the counter. Super nice people. Everybody here is just super nice. Okay, let me let me give you a taco lesson because when we first went to Mexico City, I wasn't prepared for this. But now we are. So when you order fish tacos, they give you the taco, they give you the fish, and it's just a fish taco. It just looks like that, right? Then all these restaurants have a bar. They have this bar with all the different toppings. And so that has pico and guacamole and lime and all sorts of different things. One of our first interactions at a restaurant like this, we just kind of ate the fish tacos, which is eating the fish without the toppings. And so many people had a problem with that. So we've learned our lesson and we go over to the little bar and we put our toppings and we make it whatever style we want to puff, which is so, so good. Oh, but this is a beautiful sight. And they even give you a little hard tortilla too. So, snack afterwards. All right, we're gonna dive in. I'd rather walk than race. My only run is running late. I slowly mosey in, no hurry, no. At my own pace, I go. And from the balcony, I hear the buzz of busy bees, the noise of frazzled people hurrying somewhere they'd rather be. What's the rush? I don't know, cause I'm not in one. There's something about Baja that encourages you to slow down. Maybe it's because aside from the major towns in the south, the peninsula is sparsely populated, which means less noise and fewer crowds. Or maybe it's because the roads we're driving south offer incredible stops all along the route. Whatever the reason, Baja is the perfect contrast to the busy and bustling state of California that we had found ourselves in just before we crossed the border into Mexico. Baja has been a literal breath of fresh, salty air that we're soaking in as much as possible. We're in the Sea of Cortez, which means it's a little, it's the Gulf of California. It's not little, it's still huge, but the water gets warmer here than it will, hold on, believe. <laughs> and it does in the Pacific. Oh gosh, here's another. <laughs> so fun. I love this. This donut inner tube was the best four dollars we spent in a while. Enjoying every penny of it. 
The days are sunny, the water's warm, and to travel fast seems almost like a crime. Even with many miles to cover each day, you still make time throughout the drive to play in the ocean. It's a little dolphin pie. We're gonna wear you out, okay? <laughs> so this is sort of a typical scene here in Baja. You're driving against the highway and then you see a beach and then you can just pull off like these guys. That's one of the amazing things here. You can drive on a lot of the beaches and if you see one, you're like, you know what? I kind of want to go there. Just pull off the highway, jump in the water. All this. Yeah. Look at those sandy paws. Why do we let you do this? Look at those, get an up close shot of those paws. This is what we go through See. every day at the beach. So my gosh. Oh, the femur. Stay on your bed, stay on your bed. Nope, on the bed, on the bed, on the bed. Good boy. So I can't have nice things. I try so hard to make him stay off the cushion so we don't smell like wet dog all the time. So far, so good. Kramer, off the chair. No, no, no. I know it's clean and it's dry and you want it, but we're not doing that. That's fine. Driving against the highway, this is shot on the iPhone right now because we just jumped out. We had to see all these pelicans and they're chasing fish. We've never seen anything like this before. I'm sure it happens here all the time, but for us, this is something new. So we got, we went out and we grabbed our big lens. Look at Sarah, like a champ. Don't distract me. She's in bird watching mode right now. But it's just incredible to watch them go up and dive and get their dinner. Like I said, we were against the highway nature. that just right here you got coral look at how pretty all these oh it's so pretty just on the side of the road it's disgusting <laughs> now while the beaches are incredible and the wildlife is beautiful it's the mexican people that always draws us in and makes us fall a little more in love with this country with every visit Earlier this week, we were at a campground. We were talking with some locals, and they're like, "You have to come to this beach. There will be nobody here." They weren't accounting that Easter was this week. So we did learn something very interesting. You have all the foreigners come down, and then spring break happens here in Mexico. And then on top of that, you have Easter this year. So they have like two weeks back to back. So when you come down, you'll notice a bunch of foreigners. Then they all go home and then that week that the foreigners go home that's like spring break week here in mexico so it's a bunch of locals and that's why we think this local beach that the locals gave us is very popular the whole city parked on the beach but i also kind of love it while i don't necessarily always love crowds i love the culture of mexico and like the family community aspect of it. I mean, and it's just like family on family on family. There's kids running, there's dogs, there's 
it's just so much fun. It's volleyball and jet skis and mariachi bands. And there's just a lot happening, but I love that. <laughs> so while we may have wanted quiet earlier, we got here and we were like, let's go. <laughs> so here we are. If you're walking alongside this beach and you listen to each tent or where, you know, each person, each family's place, almost every single person here has a radio. They're all playing all sorts of different music. So it is this like loud, chaotic, <laughs> dogs are barking. So it's this loud, chaotic blend of mess that's just beautiful, it's this chaotic mess. There's something about being in Mexico during something like this that's just special. We've never spent an Easter in Mexico before and we can already tell that this is gonna be something special. I know we've touched on it in past videos, being in Mexico, and we've said things like, we love how family oriented the Mexican people are. It's just very much part of their culture where they're very much, the family unit's just a very big part of who they are. And you see that, especially at a beach on a holiday weekend, it's just fun. I love that about them. Like you have multiple generations and they have their tents lined up and they've got like their, you know, their awning where they sit under and they have their table and their chairs. I mean. It's Thursday, they will be here through Sunday at least. <laughs> and I just, it's so fun. The kids are doing their own thing, the parents are laughing. It's just, I love it. I love that about Mexico. I think Mexico gets a bad rap sometimes as unsafe and then you come here and sure, like every place, there's place, there's parts of Mexico that may be unsafe, there are unsafe, but then you don't hear often enough how feeling oriented it is. And I think that's something that people overlook. I love that about Mexico. put sticker number three on the back box. These are, if you're not familiar with these, a lot of overlanders do these as kind of like stamps in a passport, but they're fun to kind of keep track of. Little postcards, like we don't collect souvenirs when we're traveling, but these are fun little ways to kind of see the countries and the places we've been around the world. So I've already done the US and Canada in this rig. And now since we are a week into Mexico, we're gonna go ahead and put Mexico on there. It's pretty cool. All right. Next would be Belize, maybe? We'll see. One at a time. All right. Come on, camera. Let's go get tacos. We're in Baja for a while longer, and we can't wait to show you more of the cities, beaches, food, and people that make this place truly unique. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.